What's up everyone? Welcome to another video. This is a podcast episode and not a vlog. In this podcast, we have a guest and a friend. His name is Langston. Langston and I have done another video, part one of this video. Langston is a cybersecurity analyst in his current career field. And in this, that's what we talk about in this video, which is how can someone get into cybersecurity? What skills are required? Is programming required? What exactly do they need to do to become a cybersecurity analyst? What are the different career and job role in cyber security and is there scope and demand and future in cyber security and does international students get hired for cyber security langston if you're watching this thank you so much for doing this it means a lot to me and our ud squad community last but not the least thank you for all the love and support you guys been giving me in comments and sharing and liking please keep commenting it motivates me to make more valuable content just like this one subscribe if you haven't subscribed already i will see you guys in the next one and now enjoy the video what does your day look like as a security analyst I can't really talk about a lot about what I do because of whatever I've signed yeah, in my company. Uh, but at, uh, for the most part, it's basically analyzing the traffic. I'm constantly looking at traffic and trying to see what I can do. At the same time, trying to build, uh, improve whatever procedures and policies and procedures that we might have in our security department, try to improve that as an analyst. And, you know, I just, I don't work on my own. I work with other analysts too. So, you know, if there's anything that could be improved, we pitch in, like, how can we improve certain procedures in the company? That's where I come in. But for the most part at a high level, if you're just asking me what my job is, it's mainly looking at traffic. I'm trying to see if we're getting attacked. And if we are, what are you going to do about it? So, so in just to make it more simpler language and generalize it and not getting specific about your company, let's say Facebook is my company and you're working as an analyst. So, so your job would be to see what kind of people like traffic we are getting, you're getting at Facebook. Uh, and is anybody trying to like do uh, like attack, uh, like things like yeah. that? Yeah. So let's say someone's trying to like someone scanning the Facebook DMZ, the firewall or their external firewall, you know, think of it as you have like a big think of it as having a castle, like you're defending the castle you at the front gate. And if something's happening, you're going to see it and you're going to basically get to the root cause of what how that how that was caused or, you know. At the same time, you have to make decisions of what traffic you should block and what you should not block because we cannot block all the traffic. You're supposed to make decisions like if you block this traffic, then people from inside cannot connect outside. There are a lot of decisions that have to be yeah. made. But yeah. Uh, yeah, like if Facebook was getting attacked, and even if they did get attacked, we would. You, once you found out that, okay, someone is, or you found out like a loophole in the in the system then you try to add that as a procedure that we shouldn't be doing this we should block this port we should block this domain exactly yeah. exactly so if there's something that's wrong then we would have to be like okay we have to give a justification of why we should close that port and yeah. based on that uh, obviously it's not our call to do it it's the management who has to do it again our job is the analyst we give the details and they make that decision so let's talk about what kind of skills do someone need to build while they are in college for these roles so if you want to so in security in general obviously you don't just start, when i started you don't start with cyber security just like that i started with this the syllabus from what i did at rt was computer science one and two so if you choose, so I chose network security as my, what do you call that? That's like a concentration. Yeah, concentration. Let's call it concentration. So for network security, so you have like I did network forensics, I did Windows forensics, I did uh, wireless security, wireless networking, and things of that sort. So you can choose what you want, at least in RIT. So uh, I I don't know if you want to get into that right now, but you asked me the main skill that you need to basically get. The basic skills I would say is if you're getting into security or anything in IT is you yeah, know how to code, TCP IP fundamentals, these two are like the must, basically, okay. I would say. These will be very helpful for you. No matter where you get into IT, having this knowledge of these two is very good because if you know how to code, it can take you anywhere. You can either, you, you can learn how to automate, you can, you can get into development if you want to, you can do, you can automate stuff and whatnot and knowing tcp ip is just helpful for you because you 
you'll just know how things work. Is there any particular programming language they should learn or just in general learn programming? For cybersecurity, I would say Python is very recommended because with Python, you can write scripts to automate certain tasks. Uh, if you want to, um, like, it's it's heavily used, if you especially heard in the field of security, like a lot of pen testers, if you've heard of this thing called, there's also a book called Black Hat Python where they basically use Python for just specifically hacking. Yeah. You can use Python for just that, but you can use Python to automate tasks. It's like unbelievable what you can do with it. So yeah. just having that skill is amazing. Uh, um, also JavaScript fundamentals, I would say is uh, from personal experience is very helpful because when you're doing pen testing or when you're just learning about web technology, like most of the stuff is web, right? So just having, and everything on web is mainly JavaScript or base or everything is based on JavaScript technologies like Angular, React, yeah. and things of that sort. So having the knowledge of JavaScript is just good. That's why, like, I started learning JavaScript most recently because it's just something, it's better to know. It's yeah. just, it's good to have that knowledge. And uh, so you just know how things work. Can someone from civil engineer or mechanical engineering or uh, some other field who have no idea about coding in general, can they come into cybersecurity field and learn on their own? They can. You can. Uh, it, you have to just put in the time. You know, it all comes down to that. How much time are you willing to put into learning about cybersecurity? You would have to start from your basics. To be honest, you don't even have to. If you don't want to code, also, you don't have to. Just learning your basic fundamentals will get you somewhere. Obviously, you'll have, you won't be able to do a lot, but like even knowing your fundamentals, like networking fundamentals is where you could start off with and then get into like uh, the security fundamentals and everything. You don't necessarily have to know how to code. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you basically, it depends on what path you take, but yeah, I just, I just said coding because it was my fundamentals that helped me. So that was my personal thing. But I know a lot of people, they don't have to know how to code. And right. they're still somehow able to get, at least a, they get a starting point. Yeah. And if you if you want to get better, if you want to be more of like if you want to like be building tools and you want to do scripting and stuff like that, then yes, you have to. Yeah. Which is the which is I would say in my opinion is the exciting part of cybersecurity also. I mean, you will you will eventually know why you would need certain skills once you get into cyber because see cybersecurity it's not like everybody likes it, right? You have to you have to be passionate about. It. You have to like you have to be like okay, I want to solve that. like think if something's getting hacked, you would want to know okay, why did that get hacked? or like you should be willing to care about these things. Then once you get into that whole mindset, you'll be able to navigate your way from there. Yeah. Like, okay, what, what is, you'll automatically know, okay, there's something that I'm lacking, so I should fix that. Okay, I don't, uh, maybe I want to automate a task which we're doing in the team. Okay, maybe I should learn a language to be able to do that. You know, so it's it's it just comes down to that stuff and, and that comes on the way. I would say, the one, the most recognized one in security, one of the most recognized one is OSCP. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called offensive security, something it's something to do with pen testing. But if you have that, that's like one of the, it's one of the hardest certification to get, but it's like a huge learning curve. I'm planning to take that at some point. I'm planning to study for that at some point because I, I definitely want to have that on my profile. But that's like, if you're in school and if you can somehow get that study for that certification, which is very hard, uh, go for it. Try yeah. to see if you can do it. It's yeah. like o OSCP. Right. If you want to still get more ahead, do the security plus CompTIA. It's it's a simpler one than OSCP. It just gives you a basic fundamentals of security. It covers everything. And you do the certification. It's like a 75 or 85 question exam. Another certification I recommend right now is the Cisco one. It's CC and it was called CCNA before it's called something else, but that's more if you want to get much more into networking, that's good to get. Yeah, CCNA was very recommended by a lot of people. Who yeah, want to, but that's a lot if you want to get into network security or networking in general. So that's a different field as a whole. What are some of the tools which you guys use or you recommend people to learn uh, with because that is something industry uses in their day to day life? Uh, to get good with Linux, for example. Kali Linux specifically, that's like the rec the one software that is has all the pen testing tools, attacking tools and whatnot, and you can do a lot with it. You know, like wireless traffic, wireless hacking, everything. Yeah, you go to Unix, 
Unix commands, just getting good with command line, that's very helpful. And uh, there are lots of resources on YouTube, you know, LinkedIn learning, whatever you can, just learn Unix commands. Uh, there's also, and then I said Python already, then I said, you know, we can go for a certification. That's obviously good. But the free stuff that's out there is... Uh, no, we uh, were talking about tools, tools. Yeah, tools, yeah. So Kali Linux, there are a bunch of tools. There's this Wireshark, mm. which is learning where uh, you should be able to learn the network traffic, how to analyze network traffic, what is going on. So when I go to Google, how does DNS work? For yeah. example, you should know that. You should know how does DNS work, what happens when you go to google.com, what's the procedure, everything. So this that basic stuff, if you can read that entire thing to Wireshark, it's amazing. Uh, I would say learn to use tools like Verbsuit. Mm. Verbsuit is a pen testing tool for web application. It's amazing. The free version is there on Kali Linux as well. It's just, it's built in, so you can, can learn how to use what it. Does, what does it do, in like, very short, like, very quickly? What what does that tool do? Verbsuit is, it's basically, a, it's a proxy tool. So you, you basically install a proxy on your browser, and you can intercept all the traffic that you do in a website, it's from logging into your account to everything, and you can basically see all that traffic. And from there, you're able to, you know, set up, web crawlers or spiders and everything to do whatever you want. So if you want to, you know, harvest credentials and things of that sort, there's, there's a lot that you can do with it. I haven't gone, I only use a free version. I never went very heavy into it. I did have to use it when I was working on campus. I was working, I was doing a pen testing as a job when I was on RIT. On campus? On campus. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, that was my job. I had to have. I'm going to pivot this uh, because I, I, Thing that you hit something which I would like to talk about. Uh, right. So you just said that you work on pen testing as a campus job, uh, and and I I want to highlight that because I think there's a lot of misconception where people think of campus job as just dining and cafeteria jobs, That's but good. there are jobs which can help you build your profile while you are studying in U United States, and that experience will be relevant when you actually apply for jobs can you talk Absol about that oh yeah absolutely so okay so okay so i guess i'll talk uh, so i guess tools will we can get to that later but like uh when it comes to like campus jobs so when i was here there were dining jobs and everything but then i did know that you could work uh you can there are so many jobs on campus that you can choose anything and just go for it so for me it was I spoke to a professor and I just asked him, are there any jobs on campus related to cybersecurity? I was initially, I wanted to work as a lab assistant because mm -hmm. I was like, I wanted a job on campus, right? And then I suddenly got to know that there's actually a department call, called Center for Cybersecurity at RIT, which is honestly very few people know about it. Mm -hmm. And then I got to know about that through a professor or a student. And I went over there and everything. I spoke to the professor. I'm like, hey, is that something for me? And then he's like, there might be an opening and I'll let you know. And he said, okay, yeah, there's an opening. Um, let me know if you wanna, if you're interested in a project. It's basically working for an external firm where you're pen testing their scalar devices, looking for vulnerabilities in their web interfaces and everything. And uh, if you're interested in doing that, uh, start on Monday. And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> Okay. And the funny thing is, I never knew it was paid. I thought it was not paid, and it was actually paid. And they paid pretty good. I could, yeah. Like, uh, for the for what a job. What's the salary range for that that kind of jobs versus the dining jobs? Like a huge difference. Like, you, can you give the salary? You don't have to give how much you're making, but can you give the difference? Like, what were you? What like what? A, like a ten dollar difference. Oh. <laughs> per oh. hour. <laughs> so uh yeah it's it's i i think from what i understood it was not to brag or anything but it is what it is right it's fact it was the highest paying jobs on campus can you talk about is there anything else you did which helped you build your profile related to cyber security like yes you know competitions and, and things like that so definitely the first the one of the thing which i already said was the job i worked was very related to what i was getting into anyways so that helped it was a good thing on my resume too. Uh, second thing is there was a cybersecurity. They don't, you know, there are clubs on campus. So there is like swing dancing club, this club, that club. So there was a cybersecurity club. So and the motto was security to community. So it's like students gathering every Friday 
from 12 to 1 in a big conference center in the classroom and we're just like learning different things every class is different and then there's like so you learn about networking they'll teach you a lot of things and everyone is invited so this gave a chance for computer science students to also join that club so to learn about security which was pretty awesome yeah um and then they have like uh what do you say like you you learn like there are like capture the flag competitions and everything so that's what i did i was part of the club and through that club they had organized competitions mm -hmm. So yeah. there were like a lot of blue team. So one of the competitions was called IRSEC, Incident Response. So the so basically it's like red team versus blue team. So I was in the blue team and like the red team has attacked you already. And your job is to find out how did they attack you and what's wrong with it. So I remember when you, you have like a whole eight, 12 hour competition where you have to like, like there's like a team of five and there are some people are on Windows. I was on the Unix team. I was working on Unix systems and the router. So I was trying to figure out, okay, how did the router get hacked and yeah. what was the thing? And then, okay, you have to log into the router, like go into the terminal, find the file that's creating a fake account on the router, things of that sort. So that's, it's. I know I'm getting too technical, but competitions helped me so much because you, le you learn things on the go. Like there's a lot of things that you don't know about, but you're learning it while you're, it's like as but if you're in industry. You're trying to win. Yeah. You're competing. So yeah. it's like you have an incentive, right? And at that point, you're also learning so much. So competitions uh, were very helpful for me. Is that competition valuable when you when it comes to job search? Yeah, because companies sponsor those competitions. I was <laughs> going to get to that, actually. A lot of cybersecurity uh, companies, the, the club was actually very sophisticated because they had sponsors from before. And those people, a lot of security professionals, they come for those competitions. So you mm -hmm. get to network with them. Right. So let, and I got to network with a bunch. Yeah. I'm still in touch with them till day with yeah. some of them. So let's say I'm in the competition, I'm working on something. They'll be like, oh, okay, how, uh, so how's it going and everything. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm just trying to figure this out and everything. And they have a conversation with you and they'll actually help you. Right. And when you build that relation with them, yeah, that's just good networking on your side. Because in the long run, you're going to be able to, you know, build that network. Right. So obviously it's, it's amazing to just just build your network from the start. That's yeah. an opportunity for you itself, especially with security professionals. Uh, so competitions are very valuable. At the same time, you know, it's outside class. You don't want to just be known as someone who went to class and not do extracurricular. This shows that you've done something else outside. You have actually gone mm -hmm. through your best to try to do learn about security. Uh, obviously, I wish I could have done more, but I did whatever I could. So when you meet people in industry, and if you're in college and you're doing that, you do you make your best. Like there's nothing like it because you're gonna know things. You'll be aware very much ahead compared to a lot of people who maybe are not doing that. And obviously, if everyone does it, it's good. The last thing which I want to talk about is interview process for cybersecurity career field. Like what is it like? Because in you know software development, you do whiteboarding and things like they're different. And and is it same? Like what what kind of process it is? It's very different for a lot of companies, but I'll tell you the most common thing for a cybersecurity interview is they want to know if you know your basics. So your TCP IP fundamentals, they want to know like if you know that. More than coding, they want to make sure that you know that stuff. They'll ask you like, okay, what is this layer? What does what do we expect on layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six? They'll ask you to know, they'll ask you the difference between what's a TCP, what's a UDP traffic, what's the difference between those two traffics, what's a TCP handshake. So these basic questions are what every cybersecurity interview was, but there were some that were different. Uh, some were behavioral, which was uh, I'll tell you companies. Okay, so I interviewed for Amazon, mm -hmm. and honestly, the first two hours of the interview was not even technical. <laughs> Yeah, they'll ask you. So tell us about a time when you were put in this situation. How did you resolve this situation? There are so many. Like I yeah. can give you a whole emblem of questions where they can ask you. Yeah. And I'll, and I and I'm telling you, they're harder than technical questions. <laughs> yeah. So if people think technical questions are hard, if you know your stuff, obviously you should study before an interview, which I did. But trust me, behavioral questions are are more hard compared to that. 